Hi, I'm Dwayne Dow. It's time for Motor Racing Classics on Distant Replay. Dover, Delaware is stock cars' field of dreams. It's here that the young guns have a history of establishing themselves. That was the case in the 1986 Delaware Fall 500, where the Pearsons, Parsons, and Bakers were replaced by the Rudds, the Labontes, and the Bodines. Ricky Rudd is the feature in this distant replay. Let's go back to some great stock car action. And we're set for the start of the race. The green flag, and we're off on the first of 500 miles here at Dover Down. And there was Jeff out, drove him into the corner. I think everybody expects him to just kind of drive away for a while and then see what happens. Uh oh, somebody had a little problem getting started there. I didn't see what car that was, but they just didn't get it in gear or something. And, well, I'll tell you, sometimes those can really cause some wrecks. And a lot of heartbreak early in the race in the first lap. But Dine, the pole sitter, comes across the first lap first. He set, a, he set an all-time record. And, and he broke the record by quite a bit, and he just, uh, I think, I think, like I said earlier, I think they expect him to drive away some, and then if they have problems, if they have tire problems, or they or after the first stop and everybody gets a chance to adjust up, then we'll see if they're going to have some racing. I'll tell you, there's one guy, Earnhardt, who's not going to let him get too far away. He's after this points race, and he's going to maintain it if he can. Earnhardt in car three. There's Bodine. And in car four is Rick Wilson. Not often up there, but the caution is out now. Right away in the early going. I think this takes a lot of the spark out of the race when you get one so early. Well, it does, and, and in this particular case, it was for debris on a track, so nobody knows uh, for sure what happened. The, the drivers are sitting in there wondering, uh, is there oil on the track someplace, or is there something? And, uh, and they, uh, you know, they get adjusted, they get going. In the early going of this race, we're still under the caution. There's your leaders, Bodine, Earnhardt, Wilson, Labonte, and Jack. One thing about starting a race like this and then having a caution this early in the race before they started lapping is that they have to start single file so somebody like Walter who started in the 11th row could have been that would have only been so far back now he's a, he's a lot further back on a restart you can see him lined up all the way around the racetrack and it makes it tough one. we're under the green now Bodine again jumps back into the lead where he is and look at them they're still single file near the back of the pack they're trying to bunch up a little bit as they jockey for position Jeff kind of stretches it out again, just up off of the second turn. But uh, I think Dale's gonna, gonna try to hang in there as close as he can. Rick Wilson has really been doing something with this Kodak car in the last four or five races, and, uh, and I think he's gonna run stronger today. He qualified extremely well. With this new surface, Dick, I notice they're running deep and hard into those corners. Very unusual for this track. Oh, yes, they can. They can get down in the turn a lot better than they used to. There's, uh, there's a position, I think, for third, that's uh, Rick Wilson. Uh, Terry Labonte and Harry Gant. And, uh, you know, there are going to be races around and around the racetrack here until everybody feels out this new track as, as Labonte tries to tries to take over third place. He tries to slip under Wilson. They have got him. Yes, he did as they go into turn one. Well, he takes a little look anyway, and he gets, gets him up in there. That slows the whole pack down. It lets uh, some of the cars in the back come up a little bit further. I've seen Rusty Wallace and the Allegard car come sliding up in there, and there'll be two or three cars. Get a little bit closer until they can get strung out, get single file, and they'll pull away again. Well, Dine and Earnhardt are the leaders with Labonte third, Wilson now fourth, and Harry Gant fifth. But as you pointed out, they're really bunched up there going after that third spot. Oh, that's some good racing there, I'll tell you. That, you know, you you don't have to go to the south to see it all the time. Sometimes you can go to Dover, Delaware and see the same thing. You know, we're seeing it here today. Jeff Bodine, who's from New York, is the leader. And he is always 
Yankees had good luck on this track, whether it's been resurfaced or not. Yeah, well, that's a Yankee that had to come to the South to learn how to do it. <laughs> now he's bringing it up back up to the North and showing everybody. A real crowd pleaser here, Harry Gann, another man with great success at Dover, Delaware. Gann is strong. Now, Gant made some comments before the race that he felt that everybody would be back like they were a few years ago, back to the top of the racetrack before the, before the race was over. Cars used to run here in two or three grooves. The track was slick, it was rough, and, and you had to work your way up to the top. I've ran races here a lot of times where I'd run 400 miles or so, right up against the outside wall. And Gent does the same thing. And I think he'll work his way up there today. But he's strong now. He, he may be the fastest car on the racetrack at this particular time. He's passing good. He's down tight on the bottom. And, uh, and watch him pull away. Gant has just passed Wilson in the fourth. There's Earnhardt in second place behind Jeff Bodine. Well, Jeff's really stretching it out. I'll tell you, he's, uh, people expected him to do that. That's Jeff but, number uh, five. Uh, after they have a pit stop, after everybody gets a chance to come in, there's got to be another caution here after a while. And when they do and get the chassis adjustment and stuff, I don't think he's going to run away like that anymore. Well, after that one early caution, everybody's running well, including Rusty Wallace, who takes on Wilson now. Wilson has dropped back in the pack and started way up there. Well, he's doing all right. He's just sitting by this time. They had a lot of trouble getting Kodak involved in this thing. They had a lot of trouble getting started. And, uh, and there he is, uh, you know, running in front of Elliott. It's got to make him happy. Jeff Bodine, the leader in car five. Yeah, he just being his own smart self, just out flying, you know, just out running the rest of it. There's Elliott moving up on Wilson on the outside. Yeah, uh, Wilson got down a little bit low and let him go. Now, this is one thing that's maybe going to start changing the race. See how they're slipping up on a track? They're already running a groove higher than they were just a few laps earlier. And uh, I think that they're going to go up higher on the racetrack, just like Harry was saying. And right behind Elliott is 15, Ricky Rudd. Ricky thought he was going to pull it out a few weeks ago. Had a little bad luck. Yeah, it was just last week at, at Richmond. They, uh, they really thought they had to race one. And they deserve one, I expect. They, uh, they, need, they need to race. They need to win a race. They just put their new sponsor thing together and, uh, uh, with Motocraft for next year. And, and, uh, and they really need to win a race. A guy who's really been coming on over the years is Terry Labonte. And I had a chance to check with Car 44's driver about this surface and how it pertains to him. Well, I think here at Dover that you've got to, naturally, you've got to be there all day long if you're going to win. Uh, if you can run all day, survive all day, got to take care of your equipment just a little bit. You know, you can't take a chance. You can't blister any tires. You can't race hard every lap with somebody and take a chance of having an accident. You've got to run at the front all day to stay in the lead lap. But you need to pace yourself a little bit also. Well, I'll tell you, Steve, he's pacing himself, beating and banging with Harry again. <laughs> he's, uh, you know, he's got a new, he's going with Junior Johnson next year. And they've uh, put their little package together. So uh, I think that he would like to show people that he was going to win, an, win another race in this car. And I think he'd really like to try today. And he is beating fenders together as the smart aleck he rides on down the racetrack. And, uh, shows everybody that he's uh, got the quickest car first off the box. Right? Earnhardt is in second place in car three as the field is starting to be lapped. Labonte in car 44 is running third and Gant is running fourth. There's Harry in car 33. Rusty Wallace behind them in fifth in car 27. And you know Bill Elliott's working back there too in car nine. Yes he is. But Harry I think is uh, is he's a little bit higher than anybody else. He's slowly cutting himself a groove up there. Terry pushes up. See the smoke just coming off his tires just a little bit. That smoke means that the car is too tight. He won't turn. And he's pushing the front end on it. The front tires are smoking. Harry's letting his car just kind of drift up there. I think we're going to see him a little bit. Where he's going to be up high and running good and fast. And I still think he's going to stop his car. Well, we've had some good individual battles. Jeff Bodine in car five, the leader. Dale Earnhardt is going to have another car in this field. But the jockey for third place and back has really been good. That sure has. There's, there's good races all around the racetrack. It's just, this is a good place to race. It's three or four grooves wide, and it's a good place to race. Now you see some of the people battling. Oh, look at this. Richmond has just hit the wall on turn two. Well, I'll tell you, it, you know, he's been having the greatest luck in the world, and now he's something broke. I don't know. Either he, he, he may have blew a tire or something broke on the car, but he just went straight up into the wall. And, you know, it's one of those things people have been saying. The man's got a, you know, he's got a horseshoe in his britches someplace, and uh, and now the horseshoe's wore out. So this is uh, this is going to be a big blow to that team. They've really been strong. 
They've been racing steadily. Others have fallen out in front of them, and he's been winning races. So, with this caution flag, people going in the pits, we'll take this time out and return to Dover after this. We restart here at Dover after the caution, and Lafani is still in the lead. Lafani got a good jump that time and jumped right out in front of everybody. He's, uh, you know, like we said a while ago, they, they really need to win a race, as we see uh, in front and run second. It's Rusty Wallace at 27. Waltrip is still double digits back as far as laps go. He had some mechanical problems. Labonte and Ricky Rudd has really come on strong. Well, he has. Uh, the Fords haven't been showing as well as they did last year in the last little bit. And, uh, and Rudd's showing them today that they, can, they still run. That's Labonte in an Oldsmobile, still the leader over 15, Ricky Rudd. Dale Earnhardt's had some interesting problems today. Mark Darrell with a story. Perhaps it was inevitable, but all three cars battling for the 86 Winston Cup Championship have had problems in the Delaware 500 today. The third one was Dale Earnhardt, who is the current leader. His team currently, as did Tim Richmond, trying to put the car together after a crash. As you can see now, the car was heavily impacted on the right side. They've got a lot of work to do before the Wrangler Chevrolet gets back out onto the racetrack. Nick, you mentioned with the points battle, they're going to sew these things together with thread if they have to to get back out there. Well, they have to anymore. There's so much money involved. There's so much prestige. They have to get back and run again. They can't leave them laying in a ditch like they did in the, in the Folgers flashback. I'll tell you, Kyle Petty's really, really running. He was, uh, he's, this is the best I've seen him run all year. And Labonte and Rudd in a real good race for first. With 24 Labonte in top. There's Morgan Shepard and Rusty Wallace. And Buddy Baker, 88, is in there. That's good to see Baker up there with a the Crisco car. They, uh, they've they had some really strong runs this year, and then right at the end, they've had some problems and fell out. But uh, he's running, running good today. Ricky Rudd coming underneath Labonte. This is the battle for first. As they go into turn two, it's Ricky Rudd. He got that Ford hooked up today, I'll tell you. I bet Bud Moore's chewing his tongue off. He's, he's the tongue-chewingest guy I've ever seen. And right, Morgan Shepard into the pitch, getting some right-side tires. That was an unscheduled stop for Morgan Shepard. He shouldn't be coming in yet. It's a little bit earlier, and there comes Labonte in. Wow, he was leading, or in a battle for first. He's going to go a lap down now, for sure. Yeah, both of those cars went a lap down. That's uh, that's too bad. Now, Dave Marcus in 71 is a lap down, but he's going to try to race Ricky Rudd and get back into that lead lap. He's, uh, Marcus Marcus got the whole new team going, and they're, uh, they're really looking forward to what's going to happen to him next year. This is a good little mini race within a race here. Yes, it is. Man trying to get his lap. Whoa! Oh. Oh, my word, that's Wallace. The Tertress turn two. The caution comes out. And again, Marcus is racing right before that caution. Well, Marcus is going to try to get back in the same lap here. He's going to, he's going to uh, try to pass Rudd. And he's going to have to, he's got to do it by the time he gets to the start-finish line. And, uh, didn't quite make it. I'll tell you, that's, that's terrible. If he had made it by, he could have made his lap completely back up. Dick, what happened to Rusty Wallace here? Well, it looks like that, uh, that he had a front tire go bad. And, uh, and and lose it. But now, I don't know. There he's spinning the car. So uh, that's kind of an indication that he had a rear tire go bad. I think something happened to the car. And uh, maybe we can find out. With Dick Brooks and Mark Arrow, this is Steve Grad at Dover, Delaware for the Delaware 500. And as we restart, Ricky Rudd is the leader. Neil Bonnet is now second. Well, we've seen all through the day somebody jump out in front and run away with it right off the restart, and uh, we'll see now if Rudd can do it. I'll tell you, Bonnet is really hungry, and he's going to want to run him just as hard as he can. And Kyle Penny's hung with him. He's the only other man in the lead lap. Buddy Baker's a lap down, but he's in fourth place. Well, uh, Baker got down just a little bit a while ago, but he's he's been running good. He's uh, those guys need need a good you know a good shot in the arm also. I'll tell you, look at. Uh, that uh, Bonnet, he's just, uh, he's not going to let Rudd go anyplace. I'd like to see Rudd pull this thing out. I got a boat he's trying to buy. Maybe you make enough money, he can get it. <laughs> you got an angle for everything, but you have to. How tough is it for Ricky in that rearview mirror with all the traffic, too, that he's lapping? Well, he's uh, he's certainly got to watch the mirror. Bonnet's not going to give him a break at all. If, and if uh, Rudd gives Bonnet a break, he's going to take it. So he's got to, every time he drives off in a corner, he's got to look in the mirror and see where Bonnet is. And sometimes it slows him down just a little bit. And a reminder that Kyle Petty is in third behind Rudd and Bonnet. There's uh, Ricky's wife. You see that boat in her eyes? She wants to buy it, too. I'll tell you. It looks like the demolition derby. Earnhardt oh, and Tim Richmond both without hoods. I was watching these guys a few minutes ago, and they uh, they have really, really put on a show. They're, this is the show of the day. 
Meanwhile, Bonnet has really dropped back behind Rudd. Ricky well, Rudd has been increasing his lead. Rudd has gotten stronger and stronger, and he's just driving away from everybody. He's doing now like uh, uh, Bodine did at the early stages of the race. He's really hooked to the track and just driving away. He, at this particular uh, pace, he could, uh, he could lap the field. Third place is Kyle Petty, still on the lead lap, the last man on the lead lap. Kyle's run a good race today. He's good and smooth there. The car's staying on the bottom of the racetrack, and the best race he's ran probably this year. Meanwhile, Ricky Rudd continues to open it up. You can count as he goes by your picture. There's Rudd, and here comes Bonnet. Oh, it's a long ways, I'll tell you. They, uh, uh, if if we had a picture of Bud Moore right now, he'd be he'd have a trench walked in that new asphalt down there, walking back and forth chewing on his tongue. <laughs> oh, there's the race of the day. Now these guys. Uh, if <laughs> you know everybody's got clowns, rodeos got clowns, everybody's got clowns. Those are the two clowns right there today. I'll tell you, they're putting on a show. Today. They're high class clowns. Yeah. I'll tell you though, Earnhardt. Yeah. They got the crowd on their feet. I was even on my feet while ago. Ricky Rudd and Neil Bonnet and Kyle Petty are the only ones in the lead lap. And believe me, Bonnet and Petty, who you see here, are well behind this man, Ricky Rudd. Ricky's got him a good groove up in the middle part of the track. If they run this away this year, next year, the next race next year, they'll move a little bit higher and a little bit higher. And it won't be long until they'll have a four or five race track again, or four or five groove track again. And, uh, and there's going to be some good racing on this racetrack. Melvin Joseph and the guys that own it and the guys that repaved it have really done a good job with it. And it's, uh, it's really done something for these people. But there goes the, you know, the, <laughs> what do you call it? Now look at the wind has broke out. The... Uh, the, uh, the the duct tape's flapping in the breeze, and uh, and those guys are racing like they're getting ready to win. Well, they are. One of them's going to beat the other one. They're, they're we'll see. be back with more Motor Racing Classics in a moment. Ricky Rudd has started in the sixth row as the leader. He was sixth in points last year, and he's looking real good now. Heaven forbid an accident or any mechanical problems. He's in good shape. <laughs> I tell you, knows. you can see who we've been watching the race, right? <laughs> There's Red's crew, and they, uh, they're, they're anxious. I, you know, they got to be. They, uh, they've managed to pull off one or two races, uh, one or two wins a year for the last three or four years, and, and, uh, and uh, they need one really bad. And, and uh, unless something happens, of course, this has been a race of a lot of things happening, and unless something happens, he's got them handled today. Gee, Neil Bonnet is trying hard. But uh, Rudd continues to maintain a big lead. They're right down to the end of it. I tell you, we're in a, we're right in the short rows of this thing, and it's uh, it's going to happen. There's uh, there's the fa world famous Harold Kinder, and he's uh, he's getting ready to uh, to display the white flag on his thing, and uh, and unless you know, barring a, a blown tire, blown engine, or whatever, a caution flag right now for somebody else is still going to let Rudd Rud win the race. And, uh, I can see you writing up a bill of sale for a boat you want to. Uh, sell them as a victory celebration. Oh, yeah, he's got enough money to do it now. He can, he can come and get it. <laughs> There's the white flag. And the only other two men behind Ricky Rudd on the lead lap are Neil Bonnet and Kyle Petty. Well, I tell you, this is this has not been or this is not the typical uh, Winston Cup finish in NASCAR this year because it's uh, because it's kind of spread out. But it certainly has been a typical race. There's been more excitement here than uh, that's been generated in a lot of the others. It's been an exciting race, and uh, and Rudd right now, you know his heart's beating fast and, and uh, maybe a tear in his eye because they really need it. Look at the crew. Yeah, he Happy took the checker. He took the checker. The crew deserves a lot of credit. Ricky Rudd, the Delaware 500 champion, one of many leaders today, and he was the one who took the checkered flag. In second place, Neil Bonnet. Good run for Neil today, really good run. And a great run for for Kyle Petty. This is uh, this has got to help that team some. They haven't been running too well, and this is good for them. Ricky Rudd going toward the victory circle. Mark Garrow will be down there to visit with Ricky. Boy, this has got to be the greatest feeling when you've wrapped up the race, you've had a big lead down the stretch, you've taken the checkered flag, and man, you're going to savor the moments right now as you get the check, the trophies, and all the adulation. Good opportunity right now to take a look at the top ten finishers, the people who finished behind Ricky Rudd, including Neil Bonnet, Kyle Petty, Buddy Baker, and Dave Marcus. Right now, Mark Carroll is ready to visit with our champion, Ricky Rudd. Anytime you race at Dover Downs, complete 500 laps and win, you've earned it the hard way. But, Ricky, a lot of that weariness goes away when you're sitting in victory lane. 
Well, when, you, when you're out front like that, a lot of those aches and pains that come on you tend to disappear a little bit. And uh, today really wasn't that physical of a race, and I think a lot of that's because of the new track surface. It's nowhere near as bumpy as it used to be, so uh, they're going to have to have another name instead of the Monster Mile. They're going to have to call it something else because today the, the surface was good. Goodyear had a good tire force, and our guys did a great job coming up with a winning combination, chassis and motor both. You've been getting closer and closer week in and week out with really out the payoff. Looks like today was the first time in a long time you've had the combination start to finish. Well, it has been a while uh, since we've been up front. You know, last week at Richmond, it looked like things were going to go our way. Then we uh, got caught up with some oil dry and it run through the fence at Richmond. And it looked like it might have been our race last week, but uh, we'll take this week also. Uh, you know, anytime we can come here and, and get a win with the competition today, I think uh, it goes for the team. These guys have worked hard. I just sit behind the wheel and, and turn the wheel and put it in high gear and go. And they've done a great job on the chassis and the motor. Another delightful addition to Victory Lane is his beautiful wife, Linda. And Linda, I don't think a bazooka or an M80 could wipe that smile off your face right now. Oh, I hope not. I hope you, that you get to see it a whole lot more this year. Isn't it nice to get used to being back here in Victory Lane? Wouldn't it be something you'd like to do a few weeks uh, in a row, like Tim Richmond, perhaps? Uh, yeah, definitely. I love that. <laughs> The Rudd family deservedly very happy after the big victory at the Delaware 500. Despite the great weather, we had a lot of cautions today, but when everything settled down, Ricky Rudd was the big winner, well ahead of Neil Bonnet. Well, he did. He ran away with uh, the last part of it, and, uh, and they deserve it. They need a win really bad. They've got a new deal next year put together back with Motorcraft. They're going to stay with Bud Moore, uh, and he's going to stay together. So, uh, you know, this, is, this came at a very, very good time for him here toward the end of the year. And, uh, and a day was great. I was certainly glad to be able to uh, work with you, Steve, and, and, uh, and Mizzou Sports Network, and I'm looking forward to coming back again. You bet. It's a beautiful facility here at Dover Downs, and we're delighted you were part of it, folks, on this great day of racing at the Delaware 500. For Mark Garrow, who did such an outstanding job covering the pits today, our expert analyst, Dick Brooks, great NASCAR driver, I'm Steve Grad. Thanks for joining us, and so long from Dover, Delaware. We hope you've enjoyed Motor Racing Classics. This is Dwayne Dow for Distant Replay. Thank you.